Welcome to Oversharing with the Overbees. I'm Joe. And I'm Matt. And each week you can tune in to hear us respond to your voicemails, go in depth on our lives as content creators, and hopefully leave you feeling even better than we found you. With that being said, let's get to Oversharing. Well, two podcasts uh, that you've started eating. Yep. But my food's gone now. I finished it. Hopefully you don't drag it through the first few minutes. Like I feel like we did last time. I don't have anything to drag through last time. What was I eating last time? Popcorn? Oh, I hope not. That would have been so loud. What was it? Do you remember? No, I don't. Okay. It's unfortunate. I don't remember what I was eating either, but I remember that I was eating in fact. (laughs) Um, And this time too, I don't know. Every time we sit down to record, I panic that I'm going to get hungry. Interesting. Why is that a panic feeling for you? I don't know. I feel like we need to sit down and do it all in one take. Ideally. Like a bathroom break freaks me out. Yeah, it freaks me out. And I know that I'm going to be stuck in this chair for like an hour plus, you know? Yeah. It's a little funny because like you can do those things. Oh, I it's know. It's not ideal, but no, it's yeah. it's very much doable mm-hmm. and not the end of the world if you have to pee or eat. Yeah. Ideally not eat. That is really something. I know. It's not conducive to the podcasting no, format. Not at all. We're back again this week. <laughs> As Matt likes to say every yeah. week. I mean, I, it wouldn't be our podcast without it. What's what's on your mind? How's your week been? Oh, how has my week been? Uh, my family stayed with us this last weekend. Mm-hmm. So we had uh, five kids in the house, all under three. Three or under. Yeah. Five kids. So that was, um, it was a full house, a little chaotic, um, did a lot of picking up toys, but we survived. I think everything went well i think we more than survived i think we had a good time yeah oh we definitely had fun we got all the kids to the farmer's market we did successfully Mm -hmm. and we didn't have any tragedy in that outing no we we went to the library yeah that was the the game changers the the farmer's market was a little warm but instead of going to a park we pivoted to the library which has lovely air conditioning and a ton of activities well it had been exceptionally beautiful weather the last couple of weeks right up until my family arrived yeah and then matt's family got here even the first like morning they were there it was okay mm-hmm. and then it went real downhill from I brought there. a little of that phoenix heat with them i guess yeah, it was bad and we it's still bad i checked the weather today mm-hmm. not to be the elderly person talking about <laughs> weather uh, i could probably do a whole podcast just on weather i think really in another oh yeah are you a weather person oh what are you just learning this about me there's like really into weather yeah what about it everything like uh, those were the two things i wanted to be i either wanted to be a chemical engineer and work doing like makeup and Mm -hmm. trying to find more natural solutions to makeup uh which is funny because i don't even really wear makeup but Mm -hmm. i was really obsessed with the idea of that uh, or a meteorologist. I wanted to be a meteorologist when I was young. When I was interested, uh, I did like media mm-hmm. in high school and stuff growing up. And I was really interested in being like a newscaster meteorologist. Sure. I could see you being a meteorologist. Yeah. That That is... But so the weather patterns, like how the fronts yeah. merge. Is Fascinating. This all, do you have a deep knowledge on it or are you just Not interested? Really. I mean, I think that I probably know more than an average, the average person just because it really interests me so i've done more reading than most okay but i'm not like an amateur meteorologist do you have any no okay so you're not like you're not using your own radar and no my predicting. my best friend's husband trey mm-hmm. is i think that he's low-key uh Oh, amateur yeah. meteorologist I like mean, at the very least he's doing a great job watching yeah he knows um, and he watches the radar and the patterns and the, and he'll let us know if there's going to be a bad storm, uh, in our area. And then he will also usually do like 30 minute and 10 minute notifications if there's something heading directly <laughs> to our like street. He's like our human emergency mm-hmm. radio. He's thing. very good. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not quite like that. Yeah. But anyway, weather's always fascinated me. Okay. I but learn new things about you all the time. I, <laughs> uh, the weather's really hot this week, like the entire week. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so we're just, we're just surviving. I get like this every single August. I'm just ready for fall. I don't, I'm not a summer girl. Yeah. I love the lake and that is the only upside of summer to me. And we haven't been to the lake, so. Nope. 
summer's just been a complete waste. No, I don't feel that way. That's strong, but it does. I just, yeah, I don't know. You're not into heat. I'm not. I really don't like heat either. So I don't like the being outside right now. The thing is I'm not right into now. cold either. No. But I like having the seasons. I <laughs> wish that the season range, like it didn't she get wants colder. San Diego with four seasons. Yeah. I can do cold, but I don't want it to get like below 25 mm-hmm. and I can do warm, but I don't want it to get above 90. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a very specific place. And ideally I want the majority of days to be between 40 and 80. Pacific Northwest maybe. Yeah. I don't I think, know. I think that might be somewhere in the temperature range. You're I really talking do about. feel like where we live has pretty good temperature. Really. Oh, like, yeah. We don't have a ton of hot weeks like this. No. No, there's plenty of places that have... It's been a very bearable summer. Yeah, there's places north of us that have hotter weather. Yeah, and the past couple of years, I feel like we haven't had terrible winters either. And no. I don't care if it's really cold if there's snow on the ground. Okay, it has to be scenic. That's my MO, yeah, is it can be freezing cold if there is <laughs> snow on the ground. And I mean like enough snow to shut things down. Like I need to have a fire going. You want ground cover. Yeah. I want ground cover, yeah. snow. You don't want to be able to see the grass. Uh-huh. Okay. Correct. Yeah, I mean, that's a very specific vision you have for this climate. And it's really difficult to move a house. So I don't know how it's going to go. Yeah. Plus, I mean, it seems to be getting a little hotter. We got 10 inches of snow this winter. Yeah. You remember that? I do remember that. Was that was amazing. I was yeah. super pregnant. Like <laughs> You were. I was like Forgot about that. 38 weeks pregnant. Oh, and man. Actually, I think I was more pregnant than that. Yeah. Because I think when it all, mm. no, I was 38 no. weeks. We got a bunch of snow all within two or three weeks in the last two or three weeks of my pregnancy. It was late January? Uh-huh. Oh. Yep. It wasn't Christmas. I thought it was around Christmas somehow. No, it no. wasn't. Remember that we had our photos taken at 39 weeks and we almost got iced in to the photo place? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is check it out. Yeah. It was bad. Yikes. It was yeah. wild. Yeah. But What's, anyway, I was worried I'd go into labor and we couldn't make it to the hospital. <laughs> you were worried you were going to go into labor and your pants were going to be down in the yard <laughs> in the middle of snow? No, I wasn't worried about that. For those listening, <laughs> if you're wondering what he's talking about, you can go scroll back on my IG feed. Matt took a maternity picture of me when we got the 10 inches of snow because it was absolutely insanely beautiful in our yard. Yeah. But I really wanted like a bare belly pick Mm -hmm. like i wanted to be nudie pop Uh, then you were and i was except for my feet didn't show so i had glitter uggs and leggings down around my ankles (laughs) i think i've got yeah i think i've got some choice uh iphone shots yeah that are very funny (laughs) our neighbors and not shareable me too yeah but maybe if we blurred some things well i don't know that they could see us uh like if they were at the perfect They would have angle, had to be like out in their out yard in, their in the yard. middle of the snow, <laughs> yeah. which most people aren't doing because it was right. cold and there yeah. was no reason to be back there. They couldn't see us from so. their house. Yeah. But anyway. Oh, I'm excited for cold weather though. I'm, I'm with you on that page. So what have you been up to the last week? I, I've been so busy, dude. Yeah. I know you know mm-hmm. because you've been. I do trying to just keep me alive i feel like like matt has been reminding me to drink water and to eat and to breathe okay i i hope i don't have to remind you to breathe i'm just gonna find you passed out in here no it's just been a really crazy week and the weird part about it is i don't really know what i've been doing do you know what i mean yeah it's been a lot of uh it's it's not been a lot of work with deliverables i guess so to speak yeah, I've it's just had been all prepping kinds of... for stuff and keeping the house up, which you would think is more quantifiable or seeable, but but I've been getting up at like seven a.m. I've been reading for about yeah. thirty minutes to an hour in the morning, and then hitting the ground running, and until we go to bed at night. Yeah. I've not watched a TV show. I watched an episode on Sunday of The Summer I Turned Pretty. Yeah. Because I've never watched it and everybody's talking about it. And after watching that one episode, I realized it's probably not worth me watching because 
I don't know when I'm going to find time to watch 16 episodes of something. Yeah, that's going to be a Because that was the first thing I've watched in like yeah. weeks. I've been wanting to watch The Witcher. I even sat down with you to watch The Witcher one night. Mm-hmm. And we, it never... Which didn't turn it on. It never got turned on yeah. because I was working and then you were waiting and then it was 11 o'clock. And, and then we went to bed. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. You've been... Uh, You've been burning it at both ends here. And I don't say that as like a, uh, I don't think it's admirable to be this busy. No. This is a negative thing. No, ideally, you don't have to be this busy. No. But yeah, you're right. It is kind of hard to put your finger on what exactly has been done. But again, we had five kids here this weekend. So the fact our house doesn't Mm -hmm. currently look like a bomb went off. It doesn't. um, It really doesn't. I'm very impressed with us because we're coming together. We kind of had to every night. I've been doing some big house projects too. Yeah. Like, or at least preparing. I've been like ordering things and we are finally doing the nursery, which I'm really excited about. I don't know. It's just, it's been a crazy week. Yeah, it really has. It's good. All's well. What about you? What what (sighs) did you do this week? I need to get the office cleared out again because we've, in preparation for people coming and with all the stuff for the nursery coming in. We've refilled the office. It is now like a Leaning laser. Leaning tower of Jenga. Yeah. You, you know where they dance through the lasers to get to the vault? <laughs> That's what it takes to get to sit down in front of the computer right now. Yeah. But I'm not that mobile, so it, it is a, a task. Yeah. Or I have to move stuff, which is annoying. We really should work on it because nothing's in a bunch of those cabinets. And I built out our office. It's a very small space, but... I was intentional with how I did the storage so that all of like gifted things and things that come in that we're not positive what to do within the moment that collect on our counter, Mm -hmm. there are designated spots in our office that go behind closed cabinetry for like storage. And I have a whole system built out for it. We just have to get it cleaned up in order to utilize that. Yeah, there's bukus of storage in there. So, and not the way we're using it right now where we just pile no, boxes. Now it's just stuff's piled in there. Yeah. But I've been really, something I've been really adamant about with this house, and I recommend this to everybody, is I will not fill a cabinet just to get stuff yeah. tucked away. So we have tons of empty, like our garage is full of empty cabinets. Even though our garage is an absolute disaster, mm-hmm. the cabinets are completely empty because until I am organizing into those cabinets, I'm not just going to fill them with junk to get junk put away yeah does that make sense no absolutely and i probably before we were doing it would have been like what why that makes no sense at all but since we've had more organized cabinets it's made a lot more sense and that Mm -hmm. if you are looking for something and you know you put it away you can go back to the same place the laundry and if you put things in a drawer that you don't like that you weren't thinking about and didn't organize you may or may not ever find them again. Our laundry room's the cleanest it's ever been. Yeah. It looks really good. Yeah, and at least the cleanest it's been while actively doing laundry. Yeah, like you've been doing a good job keeping up with it. You know, I, I've probably, again, talked about this before, but somebody taught me when I was initially living on my own, they used the example of the uh, silverware tray. Mm-hmm. And they were like, do you ever put your silverware silverware away like in the wrong spot? I said, well, no, it's in the tray. And they said, yeah, that's how everything in your home should be. Yeah, that makes sense. And they were like, if stuff has a home, it will go back to the home. Like your silverware has never ended up just loose. Tons of silverware, <laughs> like, you know, jumbled with each other in a you drawer. You take it out of the dishwasher and pour it out on the counter. <laughs> right. <laughs> like... It doesn't matter how unorganized yeah. the home you go to. I have never been to a house when they where just have the a drawer of forks and just, knives. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sure that there's somebody. Else. Somebody's there's some be like, college Mine's kids like out there that. that are like, yeah, this is our uh, silverware bucket. Yeah, but, but even then, they probably have a bucket. For the most part, like you're, it's yeah. in a designated. And so that was so eye opening to me. I was like, oh, okay, well, that's how I need to get my life. Yeah, yeah, ideally, but. We've, Not, uh, we've, we've got a lot of things to put in homes or yeah, give away to someone else's our, home. Our kitchen really has stayed kitchen has organized. Been, kitchen has been doable because everything, for the most part, that's in there has a home. Our pantry's I, we do not have, been half bad either. 
Yeah. It's not ideal. Like, I think it could definitely use some revising. Yeah, it needs some sorting. But it's sorting. not disastrous. No. You can see what's in it if I you just, go look. I think we could revise, you know, will the chips go here? You know, things like that a little bit. Yeah, there's not a, like, we don't have a set home for the individual like, items. we need to have, this is the bread basket, this is the chip mm-hmm. basket. Um, yeah. Right now, everything ends up in a basket in an orderly manner. Mm-hmm. But... But I do kind of just wing it every mm-hmm. time we have groceries. I'm like, well, yeah. this basket's pretty empty, so it's going to become the bread basket. Right. And then it's bread, but then but some I chips get put think in there. that it would be helpful to know what we don't have more of if everything yes. has a designated home. Because you can just open the pantry and the bread basket's empty. Uh, yeah. Or the chip basket's empty. You can see, oh, yeah, that makes sense. That's These are all good ideas that mm-hmm. uh, we should work on. Yeah. But that we're not there yet. But no, I'm feeling pretty good about where we are with the pantry, yeah. though. It's not uh, stressful. No. Again, like I said, you can I see what's in there. I the fridge. You did. You cleared out the fridge the other day. I've been thinking about using... We have extra Lazy Susans. I've been thinking about using some of those in the fridge. Okay. Okay. To kind of help give access to that back point without having to like pull things out and put them yeah, back in. I can see that. Because I figure if I put a Lazy Susan in there, I can spin it. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I've been just trying to really consider how I can do a more organized fridge. Something I really want to do, because we do a lot of produce, is I want to get glass containers. They don't have to be glass, but preferably glass is my thought. Just so you can see through them. So you can see through them. And when we get fruit and things like that, they get washed and then put into the sealed glass container. Mm -hmm. Because everybody I've talked to has said that produce stays good so much longer if you store it in a separate sealed container in the fridge. Yeah, I've, I've seen several. I've saved some TikTok videos and stuff of the different ways to save. I've also wondered if store. you'd be interested in doing like an ADHD method of uh, organizing the fridge in order to help eating habits. Have, okay. you, have you ever watched how they do that? I'm assuming you put like the better things to eat where you can see them. and You put like condiments in the drawer. Okay. I see. I don't. When I've watched it, a couple different people have recommended it to me because we've talked about your neurodivergence and mm-hmm. food. But I don't think it would work for you because I think it's like I think it's very much an ADHD thing. I think your autism <laughs> side is going to absolutely brawl. Okay. Over this. Got it. Because they put the condiments in the deli drawer. Okay. Yeah, that feels painful so far. <laughs> Not like... But if you can f- find a reason, I might be able to get through it. Well, it's because when you don't go into your fridge looking for a condiment, like when you're looking for a mm-hmm. snack, sure, you you go into it like seeking it out, which means you're going to open the drawer and you're going to get out the ketchup because when you need sure. ketchup, you need ketchup. Yeah, it has a home. Right. Whereas like the lettuce goes bad in the produce drawer. Yeah. Because you forget you have it. And I can see how that would help your ADHD uh-huh, brain, uh-huh. but I see your spectrum side of things just like being like, why the hell are we using a produce drawer for condiments? Yeah, because it keeps them like humidity controlled right. so that your produce stays better longer because that's the whole thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, they are purpose built drawers. They're not just like I know ours, I think spritzes water into mm-hmm. the produce drawer. Yeah. Every now and then, kind of like when you go to the grocery store and it does the misters. I'm pretty sure I've heard it like Mm -hmm. before, which I think is adding water. Uh, So anyway, I've sent you some videos about it. You can search back through and we'll see if that's of interest to you. We'll we'll check back in. I'm interested, but I I need to look at what our drawers are doing. Yeah. Well, how, how occupied and okay I feel not putting. I think, I think the produce store would have to maybe stay produce, but. I feel like that's defeating a big purpose of this. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I I don't think it's something that would help me. What yeah. helps me is when the fridge is organized. Mm-hmm. Like if I'm seeking out, normally I know what's in the drawers. And those are things I seek out like fruit, uh, cheese. I think the biggest obstacle is getting you to open the fridge. <laughs> and remember that like food lives in the fridge. I... I you're doing better. You know something that I really resent. <laughs> I, I don't mean this in like a no. Like I'm ready. I don't like that problems that I have remain talked about 
like they're and you did just compliment me and say that I was getting better uh -huh. and so I heard that but I so often think that in conversation you start with like that negative thing that I do and I get really hurt like immediately mm -hmm. my reaction mm -hmm. to that was I felt triggered because I was like man if you would have talked to me two years ago like and Matt and I how our eating habits were was Matt would cook himself a meal and I still ate out two to three times a day yeah and now I'm eating out once to twice a week mm -hmm. ever you know yeah like I'm True. eating three meals a day at home most days of the week and that is abundant improvement from where I was absolutely and yeah. they're not that I'm eating like the quality uh really diverse variety of things I'd like to be but I'm definitely somebody that like I need somebody <laughs> patting me on the back being like you're doing so great and I don't like that you don't do that <laughs> I'm a terrible cheerleader <laughs> yeah it hurts my feelings yeah because yeah. I really, I've been putting a lot of, and I'm really proud of myself. I feel like I've come a really long, I'm not where I want to be. I'm mm -hmm. not in a good spot with it, but I've come a really long way. That is true. I will credit where it's due. Where it's due. Yeah. I mean, I only had to give a whole speech about it. You did. Is that a segue to what you wanted to talk about today? Sure. Yeah. I wasn't trying to do that, but that's, yeah, that's a great idea. Now that we've talked about me supporting you poorly in this habit. <laughs> Just not, thought it'd be a great way to pivot into what you want to... That's wanna... not what we were going to talk about today. No, it's the opposite, but I, that's why I thought it was funny. No, uh, I got a lot of messages this weekend on weekend chats asking about how I have maintained my independence in motherhood. And I thought that that was a really interesting line of questioning because I haven't really had to think about it that much. And I think that that comes down to a couple different reasons. And the thing I, the reason I wanted to talk about today is I think you're a big reason in it. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> I think that there's also the fact that I don't necessarily experience mom guilt the way I think a lot of other women do. Not that I don't experience it at all, just not necessarily about the same things. And I also feel like I don't feel culturally... Uh, pressured the way that a lot of people do because of the uniqueness of my job and the ability I have to be present. Yeah. When yeah, I'm present. That makes sense. Cause you, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of women, if they are the, the primary provider or one of a dual income, they, a lot of times your job is not going to be at home or if it's work from home, it's going to have more structured hours and more structured around meetings and things like that. Or most of the time, if you're exclusively a stay at home mom, you put mm -hmm. a lot of pressure on yourself to be fulfilling the needs of everybody at all times. Yeah. Um, and I don't necessarily have that because while I am a work from home parent, the, I, I am not a stay at home parent that my only obligation is, not only it's a huge obligation, but my primary obligation is not caring for the home and my children. Yeah. Uh, and so I don't, I feel like women who are stay at home parents put a whole different level of pressure on themselves because there's this discrepancy that that's easy <laughs> or that it's not work to maintain a home. And the thing is, anybody that's working knows how much work it is to maintain a home in your off hours, let alone have that be the only thing you do. I can't fathom. Yeah. Like, yeah. we pull in all kinds of help, uh, hiring and um, what am I looking for? Exporting is what's coming to mind, and that's not what I'm trying to say. You said exporting, and that knocked it from my oh, brain. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, anyway, people know yeah, what I'm outsourcing. trying to Thank you. That's what you were looking we for. We outsource a lot of things in our home. We um, try to, yeah. Not. Uh, I shouldn't even say, like, we get our house cleaned regularly mm -hmm. because, but that's, and then we have childcare. Yeah. Uh, for part of the week. And those are our two big things. Yeah. Um, But... Anyway, long story short, the one thing that I really came back to that I feel like we can speak on that I think we're intentionally doing is 
you actively participate in our parenthood journey in order to ensure that I have my independence at an equitable amount as you have independence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would say that's true. Um, I, first things first, independence, kind of what, what are you thinking? What, what's the definition, I guess? What are people noticing? Uh, I have time to read. Okay. So that is true. You, you've been just absolutely demolishing books. <laughs> Find her I, on not good reads, whatever the other one is. Uh, story graph. Story is graph. What I use. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my username is the same as Instagram and TikTok, Joe Johnson overview, <laughs> but, uh, it's not even something that you have like followers or anything no, like that. I wish no. it was, that'd be kind of fun, but you can at least see what I'm reading and things like that. Yeah. Uh, but, you can see how much she's reading. That's yeah, what you can really do. I do. I read a lot, but, People are wondering, how do you read? How do you get to spend time with your friends? Mm -hmm. How, you know, do you have time to make content? I think that that's a big part of it too, is people seeing me make videos and documenting myself, getting the house ready to host and things like that. And they forget that documenting myself in that way is my job. And because I'm intentional about my kids not being a primary focus, I set aside two hours of my day to get the house ready in order to host when I have childcare so that when I film myself, I don't have to worry about kids being in and out of shots yeah, and stuff like that's that. That's true. Yeah. Because again, we do outsource childcare several days a week. But you also have to then understand that the entire time I'm doing chores, I'm intentionally <laughs> having to carry around a camera yeah. and a tripod and film. And it goes a lot slower when you have to intentionally film parts of the process well and transitions to make sure that you have the storyboarded shots to where the series of events is going to make sense Mm -hmm. and be interesting to look at yeah Uh, a 90 second time lapse is not the most engaging thing unless it's really you know something cool yeah and so uh anyway the the thing that i i kind of said to people was What I'm really intentional about is getting 30 minutes of time to myself every single day. Mm -hmm. So, and and I try to be conscious of making sure that Matt has gotten 30 minutes minimum by himself to do whatever he wants to do, whether that's play FIFA, surf a fantasy sports on your phone, you know, whatever it may be. Um, And I'm not talking time to like work or because like obviously during nap time, you'll get stuff done on the computer you need to mm-hmm. do or whatever. I'm talking 30 minutes a day to unplug unplug, and do whatever it is you want to do. Not necessarily unplug, you know, devices, but unplug your brain. Yeah. So like for you, you like to go to your workout, you know, yeah. or whatever it may be. I like to make sure I get 30 minutes of usually I like to read mm-hmm. Uh or go sit outside or do both those things at the same time. I love to go drink my tea outside in the mornings. And I I was kind of expressing to people that asked, I try to do it before they wake up or after bedtime. Okay. Got it. I just wanted to clarify that. So I really understood what we were. Sorry. I went on for a really long time. No, you, you, you did a very (laughs) in-depth job. Okay. Which thorough. Great. Appreciate it. (laughs) Yeah. Um, so one thing about it is you've always been very vocal about making sure that I get time, um, which makes it much easier for me to appreciate the times you need time. And it also highlights how, how to make that more equitable. And it's not, you know, 50, 50, I'd say in terms of time, I do probably still get a lot more time to myself than you do, especially right now, since you're breastfeeding because so you're kind of attached to the little guy uh, a lot. Mm-hmm. And so there's not, you, I mean, granted, you can still read sometimes when that's happening, and but it's that's not. That's so interesting to hear you say that because to me it's felt like it's been really focused on me the last couple months. Interesting. But I think it's because I do more social obligations than you do. Okay. Because as you said that, I thought to myself, you know what? He's not wrong. Like when we're at home. Yeah you definitely get more time mm-hmm. than I do, but I feel like I'm out of the house more. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe so. To me, you leaving the house is really good for you 
And we're kind of in a phase right now where anything we can do to keep you in the best state we can is best for the house, I think. Um, And I think that works both ways in a relationship, but you go out of your way and are very vocal about trying to do things to keep me in the best place possible. And so I, a lot of times am trying to be very conscious of being on board when I can, uh, to, to take things the other way. And the biggest mindset thing for me uh, that I can think of, of how to make that makes more sense is it's always just putting the shoe on the other foot and going, what do I want? What would be good for me? And then can you justify not that for the other person? You know, can you go, oh yeah, I want to, I want to go out and be with my friends or, you know, I want to go golf. Um, but no, it's not okay for my partner to go, you know, meet her friends for lunch or go do, I I don't know. You do all kinds of stuff, but Mm -hmm. I can't place my finger on one thing. But if you frame things again, it's like changing your name Mm -hmm. and not going through that whole process and, and flipping it and going, Hey, uh, that does seem really inconvenient and not necessarily like it has a ton of utility. So yeah, no, I wouldn't (laughs) want to do that. And nobody expects me to do that. So yeah, yeah, I'm fine with you not doing that. Yeah. It's, it's to me, it's a very similar flipping it and mindset perspective when it comes to this topic. Well, and I think that we have a really good relationship in that, like, if I let you know, Hey, I I don't, I rarely ask your permission to go do anything. Yeah. Uh, I would say it's more, I I just want to clarify because I feel like a lot of people are like, well, let me, uh, ask my husband. Like I hear that a lot when I ask friends if they want to go do stuff and they're like, well, let me ask my husband if he can cover the kids for yeah. whatever. And I very rarely do that. Cause I kind of know the set times that you true are obligated. Uh huh. Um, and if it's not on the calendar, it's not, it doesn't count. Like, yeah. and so that's kind of the rule we've made. I yeah. feel like if not, anything, we, we've never yeah. communicated that, but don't you feel no, like we, we have kind not of, communicated that it's good to know that as a rule. Well, but, I'm learning well, this now. I don't know that it's a rule, but I feel like that we've kind of operated by that. Yeah. No, no. I mean, I, I don't disagree. I think that makes a lot of sense. And you don't ask my permission, but a lot of times you'll go, hey, I've got this coming up as, as a heads up for, do you have something that's going right. to interfere with that? You know, has your workout moved? Uh, is there, do you have an appointment that you didn't put on the calendar because you don't write anything down? Because your I, normally brain is a you mess. Normally, when you tell me yeah. that you have an appointment, I put it onto our calendar. For sure, I've gotten better about marking no, you a have. lot of my appointments and stuff. But, but I just, just wanted to be clear that yes. I wasn't like you were yeah, telling yeah. me things, and I was like, "Well, you didn't <laughs> write it down. I'm going to plan my stuff." Jokes on him. <laughs> yeah. Put that on my private calendar. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like that. Yeah. No, not at all. Again, I think we both actively work to give the other person as much as we can. Um. Because again, if, if we've learned anything the last year or two, it's that uh, the better we both are doing mentally, the better the house runs. Right. And the more it goes the other way, the more things fall apart and the more it drags everybody down. Uh, even if it's one person going through a struggle, if, if it's dragging things down, it makes it hard for everybody. So... Yeah. Another thing that I've thought about a lot in this conversation with people asking Mm -hmm. me stuff during weekend chats is a lot of people have asked how we've maintained our relationship post kids. And I know we've talked about that some on the podcast before, but don't you think, I feel like so often I talk to women and they're like, I just need some time away. I need time by myself. I need this. And I feel like maybe in other relationships, their spouse isn't their safe space the way that you are mine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. And I wonder if that's a piece of the puzzle too, because I look forward to nothing more. I don't think, Mm -hmm. (laughs) not that I can think of front of mind than like the kids going down for bed and getting to hang out with you. Yeah. 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 No matter what it is. Well, and if anything to, to play off that safe space idea, I, again, I don't think everybody's comfortable communicating some of those things 
uh, about needing to be by themselves with mm-hmm. their partners. Uh, again, I wasn't for a long time. Yeah, for no, the first absolutely. year and a half we lived together, I was like, oh, no, I'm going to pretend everything's good. And it didn't work, but I, <laughs> you know, tried to soldier through that. So I think a lot of people are in a similar position in terms of not necessarily feeling comfortable expressing the more negative feelings or the, uh, you know, the things that you feel that may or may not be things you'll act on. Yeah. But that you still feel them and they're still a, a part of what you're experiencing. So feeling comfortable expressing that hopefully is something you can work on and get into because the, the more you can do that, you'll be closer. You'll, you'll understand the other person. You'll understand if they're doing well, you'll understand if they're doing poorly because a lot of times uh, it takes getting into more of those deeper feelings. Yeah, for sure. So hopefully that was helpful, yeah. but yeah, again, uh, treat your partner how you'd like to be treated. I think is what it boils down to. And I know that's like overly simplified. Yeah. Communicate. I, that's that's always the answer. And right? if you don't think your partner's providing that or interested or pro- in providing that and they're not making active <laughs> steps to do better. I don't know. Yikes. I, I how, yeah. <laughs> the number of conversations I've had with people recently where I'm like, yeah, uh, leave that. That that person kind of sucks. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just I wish. I know that it's so much more complicated than that, but yeah. don't don't let people convince you that you're not worthy of all of that. Yeah. And and really make sure that it's established as a boundary. Yeah. Like that, things are not perfect here in no, the Overby household. We no. fight with each other, we get upset with each other. Mm-hmm. We have gone to bed angry like <laughs> like we yeah we definitely don't practice the uh don't go to bed angry no we do uh, not philosophy uh on the bright side i wake up and forget that oh it's infuriating every day is a new day to me but, but what i will say is i know no matter how mad we are in the moment about whatever it is yeah the communication we're having i always know that you have my best interest at heart. Yeah. In the end, uh, even when things get elevated and I intentionally sabotage them and make them more painful (laughs) than they need to be, uh, we will get to a point where we're trying to constructively make things better. Uh, even if it takes some, some backwards, some backstepping, I guess would be the word, Mm -hmm. uh, on my part. But yeah, it takes a trust to understand that, your partner has your best interests at heart. I agree. And hopefully that's the case. Cause if not, uh, gotta, gotta work on that or find a better person. Yep. Speaking of better person. Oh, the best person. Greg's reads of the week. Uh, this is the segment where we talk about the articles that my dad has sent us this week. Mm-hmm. And we rate them on a scale of zero to five on how much anxiety the headline gives us when it hits our notification. Yep. All right. Number one, the 11 best coneflower plants to grow. Uh, it does not give me any anxiety. Me either. I love stuff like this. I don't really know much about plants. Greg though. was a positive boy this week. Oh. He's he's throwing out just happy stuff. He's the silver linings man. Yeah. I'm probably going to go to the other... Uh, <laughs> Uh, group yeah, text read the rest of these articles and they're going to be like thousands of people dead. I don't know, oh, like something crazy. Yeah. But the ones that he sent to just you and me this week were very happy. Headline number two, dad asks two-year-old son what makes him happy and his answers go viral. Okay. Yeah. No anxiety, only excitement. Yeah, the other thread has some other doozies. I'm, I'm just oh, reviewing okay. it now. Okay, you got it. You want, Okay. How to make the most of your tax return, according to the money expert, Molly Benjamin. And he said, okay, I'm just going to tie going on the title, but how to make the most of your tax return. Don't have one. That's how to make the most of it. Um, So where are you at in anxiety wise there with the the text and article? Two out of five. I'm in the three, three and a half territory. I've never not had a, I've never gotten a tax return. Okay. Ever. Uh, it just says taxes, and I don't don't enjoy that feeling. 
I've never successfully uh, <laughs> nailed my taxes so well throughout the year that I don't have to pay in. Yeah, as a That's, as a person who's been primarily self employed. Yeah. Oh, I've been close. Yeah. I've been close, but oh man, taxes in general <laughs> just I'm always afraid I'm doing something wrong. Yeah. And then there's the fear you're going to go to jail for doing something wrong inadvertently. Yeah. Which, Which I, I don't is, think is real. We've been like, assured by our accountant that's not that's really not like how a it real works. Thing. Like I always am afraid that I've like not paid right. Like they're going to be like you were $25 off prison. <laughs> like it's like I don't know. Uh-huh. And we've been assured that's not how it works and yeah. that uh, so they will let you know night, and, though. you know, you'll work it out. Yeah. You want another one? Yeah, one more. Trump era tax cuts are set to expire. Here's how much more you'll pay. That doesn't give me anxiety. <laughs> okay. I'm on a three again, at least. No, I like to me. Again, more taxes. So I think that I'm at this point where I'm just like, the world is burning Oh, okay. You've reached and, nihilism. <laughs> Are you familiar with that? Should that be our word of the week? Oh, yeah, it should. Tell me more. Nihilism? Uh-huh. Nihilism is just, uh, you kind of quit. You just, it's, I'm, I was about to use fatalist. Are you familiar? No, no. Mm. Here, like, we'll, well, we'll I get know a, fatal. I know what fatal means. Yeah, no, it's not. If you no, add no. an I-S-T, I don't. Nihilism, the rejection of all religious and moral principles and the belief that life is meaningless. I'm feeling a little there this week. The not philosophy. actually, like Extreme not at my skepticism. core, but I, at least with where we are on, I don't know. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I don't like how polarizing everything is. Yeah. Intentionally polarizing too. What? I'm I'm just reading more about nihilism now. Nihilism is the belief that all values are baseless and that nothing can be known or communicated. It is often associated with extreme pessimism and a radical yeah, skepticism that condemns existence. I don't think I actually existence. am that in any capacity, shape, yeah, or form. Yeah, it's not. You're not truly a nihilist, but you've got a little a little nihilist vibe this week. Yeah, like just a little bit, though. Yeah. Just a touch. Just a taste. Yeah. Because a true nihilist would believe in nothing, have no loyalties, and no purpose other than perhaps an impulse to destroy. Okay. Which I'm is a little I'm thinking maybe intense. I don't even have a touch then <laughs> because I feel like I have a purpose. And I feel like I'm generally pretty positive, even on a negative week. Yeah. So that's nihilism. Word of the week, nihilism. Yeah. How does it spelled? Uh, N I H I L I S M. Not how I was going to spell it. <laughs> <laughs> I was in my brain um, and it didn't make sense. I knew this wasn't right, but I was like doing like the Nile River and then ism. Yeah, nope. I knew Nile that was Nile is N I H I L. So, okay, yeah. Yeah, that, that part's a little tricky. Okay, cool. If you ever talk about fatalism, it's very similar. It's yeah. that, like, we all die and there's, we're all, it, you're not in control of what happens. I think that's more fatalism. I mean, I that think that's realistic. But, like, it's kind of that it doesn't matter what you do, that it's just going to work out one way. Kind like, of. everything's pre. Kind of, kind of. Like they don't have free will? Not, uh, it's almost like your free will doesn't matter, I feel like. But I, again, I'm kind of speaking on just okay. a, 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 my sense of it. I, I, I should probably read it to double check. You guys should trust what Matt's saying at all. Well, well, I did pretty good with nihilism. Yeah, you did. But then we read like the most extreme example, which is like you're going to destroy things and nothing matters. And yeah. Only half of that is true. Yeah. So. Okay. Word of the week just worked it right in there. I love that. Bad dad, mean mom. Oh man. Oh man. Bad dad, mean mom. Mm-hmm. I'm mm -hmm. realizing now that we filled our our typical playroom with a bunch of boxes, and that the yeah. kids are coming over tomorrow. Yeah. That um. It's gonna become yeah. the nursery, so we gotta figure it out at some point. I guess today's the day. Today's or tomorrow's the day. the day. Yeah, I don't have anything. No? I feel like honestly, the last week, I have felt really, really strong and positive about the majority of our parenting decisions. Good. And I don't have a ton of weeks like that, so yeah, 
I'm just going to feel good about it. What's, what's making you feel that way? I don't know. I just feel like I'm starting to have some really good conversations with G and she's getting to the age that we're really starting to communicate about some things. I mean, Mm -hmm. I know she's two, Yeah. but it's, it's clear that what I'm saying is making sense to her and that, you know, we're communicating about our feelings, what we're thinking. Yeah. We have opinions. And I just, I find a lot of pride in watching her learn more about herself and figure out how to navigate that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. She, I mean, she's very safe in communicating, communicating her, her feelings and yeah. thoughts. So that's nice. Yeah. And we hear all about him. Mama big. Mama. <laughs> then we have been, yeah, the last little while we've been into calling things big or little uh-huh. little yeah yeah guardy little mama yeah. big dad big, big. then we ask her if baby other little. people are big uh baby rory little uh puppies little other puppies are big mm-hmm. but we don't have frankie big frankie big caroline um, big caroline big basically I'm, i think big is kind of like adult mm-hmm. like these are adults and kids are are called little yeah but it's fun watching that that process happen for sure the learning my favorite thing um is she started saying that she loves herself (laughs) (laughs) so that's the number one thing for me right now yeah it gets prompted when you go i love you and she goes i I love love me me. (laughs) and uh and it's not (laughs) yeah there's times where she has said i love you back or she'll say it unprompted unprompted yeah but she definitely knows what she's saying when she says, I love me. Yeah. Also, we've laughed at it many times. And so I think at this point, she does it. believe it, but she's also doing it to get a laugh. And it works every time. So flawless execution. Yeah. The I, girl knows her stuff. I really like that one. Yeah. Voicemails. Ba, ba, ba. Voicemails. I've just decided to back your your. I really songs like it because you're better than me. Okay. Hi, Matt and Joe. I am a longtime listener from Overland Park, Kansas. I've been with the pod since day one and just love all of your overall content. Um, I'm also a huge reader, and I feel like Joe and I have very similar tastes in what we like to read. I'm currently 90% through the second Crescent City book and was curious if you caught uh, both of the words of the week that were used. I found one in the first and one in the second so far. I will admit I didn't quite remember what they meant, but I did recognize them as words of the week and thought of you guys. Um, And then as for my question, I was wondering how you guys went about making your child care choices for the kiddos. I know you use a nanny share. Oh, there's my little guy. (laughs) Um, There's so many options out there, and I was just curious how you went about uh, making those choices. I'm super lucky, and I have a pretty long leave by U.S. standards. I'm currently at home with my two-and-a-half-month-old little baby boy. Mm -hmm. Um, But I've just really been struggling with navigating through the child care stuff and uh, would love to hear your guys' thoughts. Thank you. I'd like to start by saying the number of times I've read the word akimbo. (laughs) Very popular romance novel word. Yeah. Well, they talk a lot about limbs and bodies their, their lim- limbs were akimbo yes yeah. yeah um but yeah i have noticed some <laughs> what i've n- <laughs> just the books you read <laughs> uh i have really been considering taking part in smut timber I, I i don't feel like it'd be a huge departure that's not true because when i do fantasy mm-hmm. not i'm not reading a ton of smutty fantasy i've done some but not everything you're not is. anti for sure no yeah. no no if anything you're pro but not i actually a, okay i promise we're it. gonna get to the question <laughs> but something i realize is as i've been taking in people's i've been on book Instagram more mm-hmm. and like book talk more taking in book content because since I've been posting book talk like content yeah, just served. a little bit but I've been getting served more of it mm-hmm. and I've had a realization that um maybe I'm just not as scandalized as most people by what <laughs> I read 
because things will be like spicy scale five flames and i'm like Uh oh and i don't know what i think like well i've read some things that are way past this no that's the thing is like i guess (laughs) i don't know what i think five flames is yeah i think i expect it to like extreme like to like freak me out or something and maybe there just isn't something that's gonna freak me out or make they're making pictures with like ash key text like it's just graphic yeah i don't i don't i don't know know what i'm expecting but anyway (laughs) (laughs) yeah 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 total aside child care should we get to that or are we we still talking books i'm just laughing i'm embarrassing myself no 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 no. anyway uh child care child care has been hard uh, and it's and, uh, and tough. our our nanny share is coming to an end we don't yeah. know what we're gonna do and i totally relate to the sentiment of like not knowing how to proceed mm-hmm. uh i i don't know we fell to the conclusion of a nanny share not so much because of our own needs but our friend that we do the nanny share with was in a situation where they were very much kind of had their back put to a wall um yeah. like they really needed help and they didn't ask uh they were figuring it out on their own and matt and i saw a place where we could really provide help to a friend and um even though we didn't necessarily probably need a full time yeah it worked out and it's been absolutely fantastic for us uh but that agreement is um coming to its end when we got started we kind of knew that after a year and a half or so it was going to be uh transitioning to its next phase and uh we're really everybody had more kids so we ran out of capacity for the uh a nanny share works when you know it's one or two or three kids maybe but three or four starts to be a lot for one human being to to manage at least on a nanny like if it's not part of the agreed responsibility Mm -hmm. and and we knew we knew that going in um i know a lot of people a lot of close friends as we've been talking in person they're like oh my gosh you're just having your nanny pulled out from under and i'm like oh no (laughs) No. it's not like that we've known for over a year that this was kind of the progression of things yeah uh but matt and i haven't done a ton to figure out what it's going to look like moving forward Mm -hmm. and the thing is matt's home full-time yeah and I am the majority of our work and business responsibilities. Matt has some. You, sure. You do but have But if anything, some. there's support. Right. But the Supports majority of Matt's time is spent maintaining our home mm-hmm. uh, and, you know, working on podcasts here and there. Not here and there. I would say you probably, I don't know. This is where we've landed, I think, a little bit. Is like when I look at our week, I think if Matt had two days a week where we had childcare. Yeah. And then you were responsible for the kids the other three days of the week work week. Mm-hmm. Um and I was able to have all five days dedicated to working, we could probably make it. Sure. Work. Yeah, I don't know. I, I would agree with that too, because, uh, my responsibilities could easily be kind of bulked, so to speak. They kind of get sprinkled through the week right now. And if we pick things, you know, if I, if I end up doing more things on my own or more responsibilities evolve, we can look further into it. But yeah, I probably do have the capacity to at least do a couple days a week, um, of, of childcare and to do that and so we're, we're yeah. trying to figure that out is my point <laughs> yeah our nanny share evolved because again like you said our friend needed a nanny it's expensive it's mm-hmm. really expensive and that's one of the biggest issues uh with child care is the cost um there's good options out there they just cost a lot of money mm-hmm. and so we were able to provide a really good option for both of our kids and split the cost to bring it back within the realm of a more normal uh, daycare or child care cost. It's still, it, again, it's expensive. It's really expensive and uh, it's it sucks that it is that way because it's something that almost everybody needs and um, we've just kind of neglected it, at least in the U.S. Um, mm-hmm. it's, it's kind of a universal service that I think a lot of people should have access to good child care. 
AKA, and they don't. I feel like we have no helpful answer. Yeah. Um, the actual logistics of how you went about finding, you know, yeah, I used care.com to find yeah. our nanny and we interviewed a bunch of people. I was going to say. And we you, love our nanny. Yes. Yeah. She's been great. But uh, you you interviewed a lot of people and then you set up a trial once you found the person that you thought would be the best and then past that trial, you contracted out. Mm-hmm. And so that's the actual technical logistics of what we did. And then we talked four, five other minutes about Smutty stuff. books. Yeah, smutty books and just our feelings about <laughs> life and childcare. Oh, okay. One more voicemail. And guys, leave us voicemails. I know that I say it every single week, but I truly, this is my one of my favorite parts of the yeah. podcast is getting to hear y'all's voices. You can send us an email too. We also love emails. For sure. But I love hearing y'all's voices and hearing, uh, you know, what has resonated with you or what's been on your mind about what we've spoken about in the last few weeks and I don't know. It just means a lot to me that you guys take the time to leave these messages. So, And we listen to them all. Yeah. Um, I think we've answered them all on the podcast. And if we haven't, it's because we screwed up and like we listened to it, but then didn't or get like, back to it and answer it. There have it. been a couple, like uh, less than five, mm-hmm. that the audio's not been good. Yeah. That's happened a couple times. Yeah. that It was really difficult to hear. And so it We couldn't. still try to answer a couple of those. And just yes, be like, we, we, we tried to answer one. them in podcast episodes or through email or whatever it yeah. is, or transcript. But uh, but there have been a handful of that. So anyway, okay, ready? Hey, Joe and Matt. My name is Molly. I'm from Jonesboro, so high from the other side of the state. Um, I just want to say that I think the intimacy episode would be great because I feel like there are a lot of relationships out there that have the same dynamic and it's definitely not spoken about enough. So it is kind of taboo. Um, I just have a question as to how um, religion plays a role in your life or if it does at all. Um, I think I've heard y'all mention before that you're not super religious, but I didn't know if that was from your upbringing or a choice of your own as an adult. And I'm kind of at that phase in my life where I'm trying to figure that out for myself as well. So any um, different takes or ideas that you have on it or how it has impacted your life would be great to hear. Thanks. Okay, I'm going to address this in two parts. Great. One, my parents called me (laughs) immediately upon listening to last week's episode, making fun of me. Because I kept saying intimacy instead of sex. Uh (laughs) My parents were like... People were probably like, what the hell is she even talking about? Because he said, you danced around the word sex. <laughs> Just, I mean, he was like professionally danced around that. that. Yeah. And they also thought it was absolutely hilarious listening to me. They're like, you're not shy. You've never been shy. No. I said, I'm not worried about me being embarrassed. <laughs> I'm worried about making Matt uncomfortable or making my parents uncomfortable. I was going to say, yeah. And my parents, I don't think you can make them uncomfortable is what that phone call told me. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. they were literally, they, <laughs> they, they thought it was so funny. Um, but I, we can definitely do an episode on that. Yeah. I think that um, with... A, a sex talk episode I would love to do a Q&A format where I put something on my stories uh, for people to ask questions because I don't know where I'll go if yeah it'd just, be really like, good to have a structure and know really kind of aggregate what people want to know well so that we have and I also some think boundaries to, it will to work give with a space yeah. outside of recording to kind of set boundaries because while I am <laughs> probably um boundary less <laughs> yeah you're, you're uh, low boundary for I'm, sure I'm pretty willing to talk about just about anything I don't tend to get embarrassed and it's not something I'm uncomfortable with <laughs> I know that for you <laughs> that might be a little harder the funny part is I'll probably be less boundaries on the podcast of all the stupid things I know like I'll talk more on the podcast than I would anywhere else yeah but uh yeah and it's yeah it's not even boundaries just I yeah I suck at talking about it in all aspects. But well, we can get into that on an episode. Yeah, yeah we'll, uh, we'll talk about it. As for religion, you know, I don't know that this is something we've ever talked about on the pod. Uh, maybe we touched on it. Again, I think... Why don't you give a little bit of background about, like, how you would describe your upbringing? Okay. I, so I was raised uh, very religious. Uh, structured in that we went to church twice a week. Um, Bible studies. We had our own... Um, 
you know, we, we very active, uh, well, you had big upbringing. meetups as well. Yeah. 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 So, um, was that quarterly yearly? A couple times a year. Okay. But, uh, yeah. So I was raised very religiously and, um, for a long time, I kind of just went along because, uh, that was, that was what my parents Believe. did, believed and, uh, still, still do. do, still do. And, um, I just wanted to go with the flow, not make any waves. And so I practiced and participated and I, you know, I, I know a fair amount about religion now and I spent a lot of time in it, but I don't know that it was ever something that really resonated really clearly in my life. They never really made a lot of sense to me. Um, and I, I get the community side of things and there's, uh, experiences you can have that feel really, um, enlightened and, uh, uplifting and, but it, it never really connected for me, um, on a, on a deep level. So I, you know, went along to get along. And then as I went to college, I stopped participating. And then after college, just, uh, continued not participating continued not participating <laughs> yeah i guess is the the easiest way to say that uh, but uh it's not something as much as it doesn't resonate for me personally um i don't necessarily believe there's a higher power that is really interested in our personal lives and um directly influencing the outcomes of every single person on earth uh and their life uh i do really respect the peace and the community and what it provides to people. Again, it doesn't connect for me personally, so I don't get the same utility out of it, but we have the utmost respect for that relationship in people's lives and what it brings them and the fulfillment and the peace that religion can bring people. I completely agree with that. Um, I grew up going to church. Uh, my parents were always really encouraging though of me seeking out what resonated with me. Uh, they, there was never a lot of pressure in my home of like, this is, you know, you need to be a Christian. You need to, I grew up Presbyterian. Um, but kind of same as Matt expressed, it never resonated with me. Uh, and I actually, in my life, I feel like I have a lot of really negative experiences with people who claim Christianity as the reasoning behind a lot of negative experiences. Uh, and so that made it even harder and it's made it kind of a touchy subject. A lot of my really, really near and dear close, close friends are very dedicated with their faith and are, uh, very devout in their faith. And, mm -hmm. uh, I love that about that about them. It's kind of like what Matt said. We very much believe in different things for different people. And that's not a thing for us. And I, I think that that always leads to a lot of questions about, you know, how did we communicate that to family? We were honest, like, you know, I, again, there wasn't, it's funny because I act like they're the way I behave is is much more along the lines of somebody who would have had a lot of pressure and a lot of this is how things should be and i i never had that i think i kind of assumed it or i just um but i never had the conversations and still haven't really had a lot of the conversations around uh, what i believe and what they believe and but as i got older um and i stopped participating my parents did without saying much just over the years have made it more and more clear that the most important thing is our relationship and uh we haven't had direct conversations about a lot of it but everybody's in a great place right now and we've got the best relationship we've ever had and i think everybody's just enjoying that and i've had direct conversations with everybody because i can't <laughs> keep my mouth shut yeah you do you do a lot of my communicating for me in this category <laughs> well i don't talk about you no, and what you think but... of things but th the thing about me is everybody knows where i stand on everything i am just a 
Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm not a great like conversation starter and you are a uh, an absolute bulldozer of a conversation <laughs> starter. You'll just be like what about this? Yeah. Tell me about this. Well, what happened here? And I just And it's funny because my my family's not uh great at that and so i think we all kind of appreciate just having someone that's like over christmas we had some of asking the wild ass questions best conversations with yeah. matt's family and we got done i was like i didn't know any of that and matt was like i don't know any of that me either <laughs> yeah because nobody ever asked yeah no and, and again that's uh it's somewhere where i could definitely grow but um and i could keep my mouth shut sometimes yeah maybe but i think again in a safe environment like that you're a really funny story <laughs> This wasn't my mouth. I need to keep my gestures to myself. Okay. Uh, I should have put this at the beginning of the podcast. I hope you guys are all still listening. <laughs> so this weekend, I gave Matt double birds right <laughs> in front of his mother. Yeah, and my family. <laughs> yeah, and his aunt. But his aunt knows me. Like, yeah, like, yeah, you guys are. She's, we have more she's of got a, a much peer more... relationship. So while she may never give somebody double birds, <laughs> I didn't feel as like, oh, that was yeah. probably something I should have saved for when it was just. It us. didn't seem out of character <laughs> yeah. to her. Although I don't think it seemed out of character for your mom. I just yeah. think that she may, you know, wish that I. You had a little less character <laughs> or more moment. character. So. I'm in, you may have to tell us. I'm in our kitchen. Okay. And I'm so, sitting yeah. talking to Matt's mom and his aunt. And all of a sudden, you can see our backyard out of our kitchen window. And suddenly there's fire in my like side view. And I look over and there's like a three foot tall flame coming out of our grill. And, I, <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh, what is <laughs> happening? And I look over to see like what Matt's doing. And Matt is holding <laughs> a gas can, a five gallon, no, it was no. a two and a half gallon. No, just a little one gallon. Oh, one gallon. Oh, it was that small. Does not matter. Yeah, it's okay. a little. Yeah. Anyway, holding. Uh, I, I knew. A milk it, I said five, and immediately was like, I knew it <laughs> wasn't a, a huge gas. No, can. I know it was. That's what came out of my mouth. I was like, that's not right. I specifically poured like a little bit into a little gas can. Okay, well, I don't know any of these things. I'm just in my kitchen. Matt's holding a one gallon gas can with flames erupting from the top of it. And he is attempting with his hand to put out the end of the gas can fire. No, 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 no. Yes. I was I, Okay, I was not trying to touch it. I was trying to like wave air over it to try and extinguish the flame. Right. To suffocate it. Yeah. Those things sound exactly the well, same I was not me. like grabbing it. No. Okay. You were like batting at it. But I'm okay. Right I was not flame. trying to use my hand to put out the flame with my hand. Okay. I want to be clear. I'm not a complete idiot. I mean, you're kind of a complete idiot. This was not a bright I, moment guys, for me. I stand up on, I'm on one of our kitchen stools. I'm standing one of our ch kitchen stools and I'm yelling. Matt can't hear me. Like we're inside. Matt's outside. I'm going, Matt, throw it. <laughs> throw it in front of his family. I'm yelling these things. Screaming. Because I'm like... I'm panicking because he's close enough to our house. I wasn't worried about no, you. No, not worried about me at all. Well, you didn't seem in danger at all. <laughs> you didn't. Like, it, it. the fire didn't make me nervous like somebody's going to get hurt. Uh -huh. It made me nervous like that's close enough to the house and it's hot enough and dry enough that if the wrong thing touches, like, the grass or the whatever... Remember, this is all in the mm -hmm. heat of the yep. moment. Yep. This is this is how it felt. It was an immediate reaction. Yes. I understand. And so Matt throws the gas can out into the yard, which at the time I'm like, yeah, thank God. And then that was actually, Matt's like, that was actually really dumb because the, the, the yeah. grass yeah. was dry. That could have been Gas really flew dumb. out of the gas can. Like, like little fires started and they went out, but yeah. like it was and, not great. And then he's panicking. He's trying to get the hose out, but he's not unwinding it. That was dumb. He's just Anyway, we're that watching. Was, and I knew people were watching me, so it made it worse, worse. and I looked even dumber. <laughs> I Like, if I had taken the extra four seconds to just, like, undo two loops of the, the hose, 
we would have been fine. Yeah. I was just yanking at the hose on the reel. Well, then Ugh. after all this comes to a conclusion, Matt looks back through the window to see all of us watching. <laughs> And I jokingly, like it was, it was fun loving. It was mm-hmm. not like an actual angry. I gave him a big smile and I flipped him off. Yeah, I gave a, I gave a thumbs up to the window, <laughs> like, oh look, that went super smoothly, right? Yeah. And then you gave me a double bird <laughs> with a smile on your face, but I think it, my mom only saw well, the double. And if birds. it would have just been us in our home, that would have been funny. Yeah. And it's very much our communication. Still was funny. No, I yeah. would argue it was still funny. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But uh, anyway. Yeah. That's my exit story of today. To provide my side, uh-huh. what I was doing is the grill. So we have a, a big oh green egg. Uh, I was really struggling with the grill. Uh, I had not yet realized that there was a ton of ash in there that I wasn't aware of um, that was preventing air from flowing through it. So uh, had uh, had failed to clean it out the last time it got used. And so we ended up... Uh, having a lot of difficulty starting the grill, which I normally very easy to start, not a big deal, was fighting it, was super mad, super frustrated with with the grill and the lighting of the grill. So I resorted to gasoline in in an attempt to start the coals of this grill. And uh, yeah, yeah, I I, I tried to pour it in from a, a high altitude, but it did ignite the end of the gas can. And so I was holding a gas can, I mean, after the initial fireball in the grill. I know you think you're making yourself sound less dumb, but you're just giving more details on... I I don't know that I was going to look less dumb. (laughs) I was just providing more... It was pretty funny. A clearer picture, so yeah. I laughed so hard I cried. (laughs) In retrospect, it is very funny. Yeah. Because nothing burned and nobody got burned. It it was totally fine. It ended up being not a big deal. We do need a new gas can. Uh, it, it did. It did do a little damage to the plastic gas can. It did do a little damage to the plastic gas can spout. But um, I think that's our son telling to us to wrap up the podcast. So <laughs> five star review. Uh, uh, he, subscribe. Yeah, do he's all the up things. from his nap, so yeah. we're gonna call it quits. But Watch the YouTube. Yeah, you know, do the stuff. Do we the podcast. Love you things. guys. Talk soon. Send it to ten of your friends and have them send it to ten of theirs. Correct. Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye.